Welcome to Weekend Meetup, episode 15. I'm Hannah Pinkerton from Hannah's Pet Sitting and Homemade Pet Supplies, and I'll be presenting this week's show. This week's show will be focusing on fleas and ticks in dogs and cats, and we'll have a future episode on flea and tick prevention, or at least tick prevention in humans. And before I get started with this week's show, I wanted to do a quick pet spotlight on one of my pet sitting clients. Behind me, you'll see Pax. He is a domestic short hair indoor cat that I care for, and Pax is very playful. He loves to lay on his, on his cat tree and look out the window and keep an eye on the neighborhood, and he also loves to play with all of his toys and run around the house, so he's a lot of fun. And now for this week's show on flea and tick prevention. It's very, very important in Southern Maryland, and especially in St. Mary's County, to be knowledgeable about and be able to prevent flea and ticks in your pets, in your dogs and cats especially, because fleas and ticks are so prevalent in this area. With, with the mild winters that we've been having lately, they have not been dying off like we would probably like to see them. So it's very, very important, especially because ticks can carry Ehrlichia and Lyme disease, which our Lyme disease can affect humans and dogs and cats and um, Ehrlichia can affect both as well. Now there is a vaccine available for dogs that uh, aids in Lyme disease prevention. It is very effective, so that would be something to speak to your veterinarian about. If you live in this area, it may be of interest to your pet. And I also recommend keeping your pets on flea and tick prevention year round. There are several different methods you can use. The first being flea and tick collars that repel fleas and ticks. Personally, I have not found these to be very effective, but some people do use them and are happy with them, so that's an option. Uh, next, another option is a flea and tick spray. They make both chemical-based sprays and herbal sprays for your pets that you spray on their coat. And this is something that typically needs to be applied several times a day, but that's an option for you. And then there are topical, topical solutions which are applied on your pet's back between the shoulder blades, neck, by the tail, and sometimes behind the ears depending on the size of the dog. I think these are what I see the most of in my pet sitting and in, in former pet professional experiences and what I use for my personal pets as well. There are several brands on the market and um, the way they work is by getting into your pet's bloodstream and when the fleas and ticks bite your pet they die. So it doesn't doesn't repel fleas and ticks as much as it as certain brands may advertise, but it is very effective in killing them. So you may still find fleas and ticks on your pet, but typically they will be dead if they have bitten your pet. Um, and then there's also pill prevention. There are monthly pills that your pet can consume. Now I understand they are not as effective on ticks. I think there are certain types of ticks that may not be covered by those pills, but that is an option for you. And then there are also pills for flea infestation that you can give to your pet once a day for several days until the infestation is gone. So that's not really a preventative, but that's something you can use if you do find yourself in an infestation situation. And then there are also flea and tick baths. You can either buy shampoos yourself, and there are citrus-based or chemical-based shampoos you can use, or you can take your pet to a local groomer to have them bathe. This is not a prevention, um, but it does rid your pet of any existing fleas and ticks. So if you find yourself in an infestation situation, that's something that you can consider. Now, if you do get, if your pet does get infested and you bathe them with flea and tick shampoo, once they're completely dry, it's very important to apply your method of flea and tick prevention, whether it's topical, spray, collar, or whatever it may be, immediately in order to keep your pet pr protected and from getting infested again. And then there are also yard sprays that you can use to kill fleas and ticks as well in the yard. So that only works for your own personal yard. They can still pick up fleas and ticks elsewhere, but that's another option that you may be interested in. Um, I do have more information on flea and tick prevention as well as certain brands I would specifically recommend not using on my website. So um, you can check that out at www.hannahspetsittingmd.blogspot.com. And um, I also wanted to recommend everyone check their pets regularly, especially if you've been outside with your pet or if your pet's been around other dogs or cats. For example, if they've been boarding at a grooming facility, doggy daycare, at a park, going for a walk somewhere on the side of the road, any place outdoors and or, or, and or around other pets is where they could pick up fleas and ticks. So run your hands over their coat, use a flea and tick comb if you'd like to. And um, for longer haired breeds, you may also need to use a brush or comb to go through their coat, check for fleas and ticks. If you see your pet scratching in an area where they don't typically scratch, Give, give a check, there may be a tick hiding behind their ear or on their belly, something like that. Go ahead and remove those. And there are special tools you can purchase to help you remove the tick if you're not able to get it off with your fingers. 
Fleas typically do need to be bathed in order to rid them because if there's one, there's usually more than one. Um, so check your pets over, and that goes year-round. Here in southern Maryland, we haven't had a lot of cold, harsh winters that have been killing off the ticks and fleas as much as we would like. So they can be any time of year, usually not in the winter, but it's still a good idea to check. And fleas and ticks actually can live inside as well. Once they get inside, they can start breeding. So they can live even indoors in the winter. So that's why it's important for if your pets are indoor only, for example, indoor cats, it's still important to keep them on flea and tick prevention year round because those fleas and ticks can be transported inside on your own clothing or on that of another pet. And once they get inside, it's, it's let's just say it's much easier to prevent than it is to treat. So that's why it's, it's very important to keep them on flea and tick prevention year round, even if they're indoor only pets. So, um, that's all I have for you guys on flea and ticks today, but I do have two quick announcements before we wrap up. We've got an upcoming pet fair, St. Mary's Animal Welfare League Animal Fair, which will be on Saturday, May 10th at the Leonardtown Fairgrounds from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. So it's going to be a lot of fun if you have pets, like pets, looking to adopt, come on out. I'll be there and have a booth as well, so if you have any questions for me or would just like to say hi, you're welcome to do so. And we've also got another event coming up, Steamboats and Wharves of St. Mary's County, which will be presented by Dr. Ralph Eshelman on Wednesday, April 30th from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. This event is free and it'll be held at the St. Mary's County Commissioner Meeting Room, which is located at 41770 Baldridge Street in Leonardtown, Maryland. That's all for this week's episode. We'll have another episode coming up for you in the future about ticks and humans. And thanks for tuning in.